So I'm always surprised by how many people have an Apple TV or an Apple TV 4K and don't use it to its full potential. So in this video, I wanna share with you 21 tips, tricks, and hidden features that I found that I think a lot of people might not know about that can bring your Apple TV to the next level. These can turn you into a power user and really unlock a lot of really cool features that this device is able to do, making it, in my opinion, basically the best TV stick out there. So starting off with number 21, we all know this has Siri and, and sure you can ask it for the weather or what time it is in London, but did you know you can ask Siri, what did they just say? So if you press down the side button or just say the command for Siri, in the, while you're watching a show or a movie or something and say, what did they just say? It'll rewind about 10 to 15 seconds, turn on closed captions and then play it again. That way you're not rewinding and pausing and trying to turn up the volume and, and listen to it over and over. Like just a really cool simple feature that allows you to see, like hear some more hidden dialogue in a movie or a show that I use personally all the time. Then number 20, did you know you could double tap the Apple TV button for recent apps, just like your iPhone or your iPad? So if you have a lot of different apps open, you're multitasking, or maybe you just wanna switch back to something you were watching earlier, different app, you can double press that button, the Apple TV button that is, and see all the different apps. And you can swipe back and forth using a little touchpad on the top. And interestingly, you can also close the apps. So if your Apple TV is getting a little bogged down, too many apps open, you can just swipe up just like you would on your iPhone and that will close those apps. And speaking of shortcuts, sometimes it takes a lot to go back to your home screen. So if you're deep in an app or deep in settings, rather than hitting the little menu button or the back button a bunch of times, you can press and hold that and no matter where you are in the interface, it'll always bring you back to home. And that's just one of several ways you can actually get home. I'll talk about the other ones in just a minute. Number 18, this is probably my favorite on this entire list. This is picture in picture, which means you can have two things playing on your TV at once. You can have one thing taking up like the whole screen and that would be maybe like if you're watching a movie or at the end of a show on Netflix or something. And then in the corner, you can have a smaller little picture that is going to be playing something completely different. So maybe you're, you're watching something live on your iPhone, rather than having your iPhone and your TV there, you can cast from your iPhone, for example, and have that played in the little bottom corner so you can finish up your Netflix show and wait for some speech or whatever you're watching live to come on, or maybe a sporting event, for example, uh, to come on on that little one and then switch over to make that full screen. It's just a really convenient way to have two things on at once. Similarly, if you're into like fantasy sports, you could have maybe two football games on at once, Things like that would be pretty useful in my opinion. Number 17, you can actually customize the screensaver to show basically whatever you want. So it's really cool. One of my favorite features of the Apple TV are the beautiful screensavers that it comes with. But if you decide, you know, you really just like the underwater ones or you really just like the drone shots over landscapes, you can customize that within settings. Alternatively, if you just don't like those and instead you want your own photos, your own home photos or videos, you can set that as well so that you can show those whenever you're not watching your TV. All right, so number 16 is a really cool one for kind of making it easier to access some different content. There's really two apps that I think this works best on, Apple TV and Apple Music. So by default, when you are on your home screen and you hover over Apple TV, for example, it'll suggest things for you to watch, but you can actually change what this is and instead show what's called Up Next. And this would be continuing shows you already started watching or things that you didn't even start watching that you have on a list that you definitely want to watch next. And so in order to configure this, you go into your settings, you go to apps, you go to TV, or alternatively, you go to music if you wanna do this for Apple Music, and then you'll see a setting for shelf. And you can click on that, hit the select button on that until it says Up Next. And so this is really cool. So like I said, for Apple TV, for example, when you hover over the app then, it'll show uh, shows or movies that you can continue watching. Or if you want to add other things to Up Next, uh, you could just long press the select button when you're hovering over that specific show, and then you can add that to Up Next. So in the future, if there are movies or shows that maybe other people suggested, it just makes it easier for you to access those from your home screen that you could just hover over that and go and click on those. Number 15, you can actually airplay and do screen mirroring from your iPad, your iPhone, or your Mac. It's something I think a lot of people are aware of, but honestly, the more I use an Apple TV, the more I start to realize the different use cases you have with this. I think it's great, not only for like presentations and PowerPoints and things like that, also video calls would be really useful here, uh, or just showing anything from your phone to a larger group of people. If you have a, a, like a, a party and you wanna show a bunch of photos that you took on a recent trip, 
it's just a really cool and convenient way to do that. Same thing if you're showing like a YouTube video, whatever, super easy and, and really convenient. One of the big benefits, I think, of an Apple TV for anybody in the Apple ecosystem. Then number 14, you can actually use Siri to do a lot more than you think. Like I said earlier in the video, but now I wanna talk about actually navigating throughout the interface. You can use it to change apps, you can use it to download apps, you can use it with, to open a specific episode of a specific show from a certain season within an app which I think is really impressive that you can do that. Or if you could just ask it to like go back 16 minutes in a show or fast forward two minutes in the show. So I think that's really impressive. Really for me personally, I've been using it to say like download YouTube, download Netflix, things like that, or just open the different apps. You really basically never have to use the buttons. And I think of all the implementations of Siri across the ecosystem, Apple TV is where I think they did it best. It makes sense, they're simple commands, but it's just so deeply integrated into the UI and you basically never have to use the remote. Like you can use Siri for anything out there, including typing as well, which brings me into number 13. You can type with Siri, or of course you could type with your phone as well. I'll talk about that in a second. But rather than using the keyboard, which by default is a linear keyboard, I think it's really inconvenient to type with. And yes, you could go in settings and change it to a grid keyboard, but what I do for emails and passwords and, and things that most voice assistants definitely struggle with, Siri is able to allow you to spell it out. So you can say like, capital J and start doing all that stuff and, and it works really well. Now, as a bonus, you could also just connect a Bluetooth keyboard. So if you have a keyboard that you use for your desktop uh, and that might be an easier way to type, you could definitely set that up and connect it very easily within your settings. And while we're speaking of that, number 12 is basically just that. You can actually use Apple Arcade on here and connect with a Bluetooth controller to play your games. Now, Bluetooth controllers, there's a whole variety of different ones you could use and connecting it to this is super easy. You just go into settings and you just go to your Bluetooth settings and you can connect gaming controllers. I think that's a really cool thing. You could also connect AirPods or other audio devices. So if you press and hold the home button as well, you can select the audio source. So by default, I'm using this Sony Bravia 65 inch TV, which are with a really nice Sony soundbar. Uh, I've got subwoofers, I've got surround sound. Like it's really nice. It's a great movie setup, but it can get pretty loud and sometimes other people don't wanna hear what I'm watching. So connecting AirPods is super convenient and just putting my AirPods in and switching over the audio source makes it so convenient to do that. Of course, you can also connect to other Bluetooth earbuds as well or really any Bluetooth headphones, not just AirPods and they all work very well with this. Number 10, you can actually connect HomePods as well. So if you don't have a sound bar with your TV and you just have like a regular modern TV, Honestly, the sound on modern TVs is really not that great. Even a very cheap soundbar makes a massive improvement in my opinion. And HomePods are probably the best way to do that if you have, uh, if you have an Apple TV because HomePods already work for uh, listening to media or, or like doing any HomePod stuff, asking Siri questions. But here you can also use it as a stereo pair with your TV and it doesn't take up any other ports on your TV. It's all wireless and it works really well. Now you can do this with HomePods mini or the newer HomePods as well. Again, you get the full function of HomePods, but also you can connect it and it plays through your TV. Number nine, on the home screen, you can actually press and hold the select button on any app to rearrange the home screen apps or just delete apps. So it kind of declutters it, makes it easier to access the apps that you would use most. And like I said earlier, the UI is, is kind of similar to your iPhone in many ways. Uh, so it should be pretty intuitive to actually do this once you press and hold the home, or once you press and hold the select button. Number eight then, you can customize your TV button in settings. So remember earlier in this video, I said you can press and hold the menu button. It's the one that looks like a back button to go home from anywhere. You could also press the TV button. And in order to do this, you actually have to go into your settings. You go to remotes and devices and select TV button. Now, personally, I don't watch Apple TV like the Apple TV app, especially often. I don't really stream on there. Uh, so I would rather not have that. And instead, I have that going to home, just an easier way to access my home screen. I do wish Apple allowed us to customize that and map it to other apps, maybe like Netflix or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, they don't allow us to do that. It's just Apple TV or home. So for me, I chose home. Number eight, if you go to settings, then you go to accessibility shortcuts, and then you go to triple click the menu button. This is really cool. The menu button on the left there, if you triple press that, 
you can actually have like a, a new special feature here. And these are meant for accessibility. So many of them might not apply to a lot of people out there who maybe don't need accessibility features. But one that I think most people would appreciate would be closed captions. You can turn this on or off very easily uh, by triple pressing, just a nice little shortcut. So if suddenly there's loud noises and you have to like read on screen, just triple press and, and you got your closed captions there. Number six, like I said before, I'm using a Sony Bravia X93L. This is a really cool TV, I love using it. Um, but you can actually use other remotes with the Apple TV. And I thought this was really interesting. So like my Sony remote works perfectly fine to control and navigate uh, the Apple TV. So I don't need to have all these remotes all the time. If I've got my Apple TV remote sitting on the other side of the room, I could still just use the Sony remote for that. And similarly, it really integrates well with like the volume controls on both remotes, control the volume, uh, playback is great. I'm impressed with how well these two actually work together. Number five, you can swipe on the touchpad on your Apple TV remote uh, when you're paused to scrub back and forth. So remember before I said I use Siri for this, uh, I like to ask Siri to go backwards and forwards, but if you wanna actually see like a specific frame, scrubbing back and forth is a more convenient way of doing that in my opinion. And so again, pause and just kind of slide your finger back and forth fast or slow and that'll move it back and forth and you can choose exactly where you want to play. So if somebody left and you remember what the scene was or maybe you fell asleep when you're watching it last night and you wanna get back to where you left off, that's a convenient way of doing that. Number four, you can actually use your iPhone or your Apple Watch as a remote. I think many people might know about the, the iPhone but Apple Watch, maybe you didn't know you could do that and like it's pretty much impossible to lose the remote when it is strapped to your wrist. So personally, I think that's a big benefit. Uh, again, like this, pretty easy to get lost in a couch, but your watch definitely can't do that. Moving on to number three, to optimize your experience and watch with the best color possible, if you go into settings, you go to color and audio, and then you go to color balance, you can actually use your iPhone to calibrate the color on your screen. This is really cool. Use a front-facing camera on any newer iPhone, and it is able to calibrate that. Again, I'm using the Sony Bravia X93L. I love that TV. It has Dolby Vision, so I actually don't need to use this feature. In fact, if you go into the settings, Apple TV knows that and it tells you like, hey, your TV has Dolby Vision. You don't need to calibrate it. It's already very color accurate. But for other TVs that might not have that feature, older TVs especially, like that's really convenient. I think it's pretty useful as well. Moving on to number two, you can enable dark mode or disable dark mode if you want a brighter appearance on your interface just by going into settings, general, and then go to appearance and you can choose dark mode on or off. And then lastly, this is a great one if you have smaller children around, uh, if you want to make sure that they're not watching something they shouldn't be watching, especially if you're not in the same room as them, you can go into settings, go to restrictions, and then set up a pin for limitations so you can choose what they're able to watch, what they're not able to watch, and of course that is going to be limited or gate kept by a pin that you choose. So those are 21 of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features with the Apple TV. This is the 4K model like I said, but basically all of these are going to work on other Apple TV models as well. I hope you found this helpful. I hope at least something in this video uh, kind of gave you a new idea of how to use your Apple TV. And if you have any that I maybe didn't mention, definitely be sure to leave a comment down below. I'll be reading as many comments as I can, probably all the comments, um, and I'm, I'm super excited to find out any things I might have missed in this video. So, I'm Mike O'Brien, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.